Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist. And a couple of months ago, I was asked to create some content for an online mental health platform, and they wanted me to define what a healthy relationship with food looks like. So because you know I love an acronym, I came up with the acronym HEALTHY, which I'm gonna share with you today. So this is just some guiding principles of what a healthy relationship with food can look like. Because quite often when I ask people, what they want their relationship with food to look like. They're very good at telling me what they don't want. They'll say, I don't want to binge. I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want to be thinking about food all the time. And that's all very well, but the longer we are focusing on the thing that we don't want, the more we're just battling with the thing that we don't want, as opposed to creating and practicing some of these principles. Now, that might sound a little bit idealistic, and I don't know many people who I would say truly have a healthy, easy relationship with food. It's a bit complex for a lot of us. But anyway, let's begin. The H is for, can you guess it? Hunger and fullness. And this doesn't mean that to have a healthy relationship with food, you only eat when you're hungry and you stop when you're full. But to, in a healthy relationship with food, you recognize hunger and you recognize fullness and you are able to respond to it. And that doesn't mean you do it perfectly. Sometimes you will be over full, but there's just more of an intuitive sense of knowing, oh, I don't feel ready to eat something. Whereas for people who struggle with food, often they don't recognize they're hungry until it's sort of stomach growling hunger. And when there isn't all that mental noise in the way and that mental judgment about whether you're too hungry or whether you eat too much, you're much better able to listen to what's going on in your body without all that mental noise going on. And the E is for enjoyment. So these people enjoy their food. Now I know that there are some people out there who really see food just as fuel, but they are few and far between. I don't have anybody in my circle in my life who is like that, but I understand these people exist. So sometimes people will say to me when, when they're telling me what they want their relationship with food to look like, they'll say, I just wanna see food as fuel, or I just wanna be able to take it or leave it. But for many of us, that is just not a realistic expectation, especially when you've had a complex emotional relationship with food, to think you can go from that to being kind of apathetically, oh, I'd like to be able to take it or leave it. It's just not gonna happen. The example that I used to give a lot actually was, it's like if you had a very passionate but toxic affair with somebody and you broke up, chances are you could never see that person again and feel completely neutral. That's kind of what you're asking yourself of with food. If you're trying to say you wanna to get to a place where emotionally it just doesn't matter and you only eat according to your physical needs. And A stands for assortment of food. So people with a healthy relationship with food tend to eat a variety of foods. Whereas if you really struggle with food, it's very common for people to have safe foods and foods that they're like, okay, these foods are okay and I feel safe and in control and comfortable when I'm eating in this way, but these foods over here, these are quite scary and I avoid them because I don't trust myself or I avoid them because I think that they're bad. That's very different to somebody just going, I wanna prioritize having lots of nourishing foods in my diet and I can be flexible depending on the situation. We are driven to seek out variety in food. It's usually why if you've got a buffet and there's a whole variety of food, we're tempted to eat more. Even on your plate, if you have just one type of food, we tend to eat less than if we have a variety. But when we only have one type of food, I don't know about you, but if I have a one pot meal type thing, I'm more likely to, yes, maybe feel comfortably full, but I'm more likely to feel unsatisfied or just feel like, oh, I need just a little something else afterwards and then I feel satisfied. So this, the idea of variety is really important for increasing satisfaction and also from a place of making peace with food and not being frightened of different food groups. Now the L in healthy, and I like talking about this one, it stands for liking themselves. Now I don't mean that people with a healthy relationship with food like themselves more. That's not necessarily true. But the difference is how much they eat, what they eat, when they eat, how they eat, doesn't affect how much they like themselves. This really is the bedrock of problematic relationship with food. It's like a mirror of a problematic relationship with yourself. So if you overeat or you eat in an out of control way, you're telling yourself, gosh, I'm the worst person in the world. I'm undisciplined. 
I can't do this, I'm greedy, I'm disgusting, all the things that people say to themselves. And yet, if you feel like you're on top of your eating and you're in control and you're eating exactly how you want to, you feel proud of yourself, you feel like you're achieving something, you feel strong, you feel like you can do anything. Do you see how your view of yourself is being completely dictated by how you are or you aren't eating? This really sets you up for a difficult relationship with food because there's so much at stake. It's not just, oh, I might overeat and feel a bit uncomfortable and experience some regret. It's like, oh, if I overeat, I'm gonna feel disgusting. I'm gonna hate myself. So in that moment, like the conflict around the food is like through the roof because there's so much on the line when how you see yourself and your self-esteem is so tied in with how you're eating. And T is for three meals a day or some kind of rhythm. I'm a big fan of rhythm because rhythm helps us to regulate. Our bodies work in cycles and our brains and our bodies anticipate. So when you eat meals at similar times each day, you will start to feel hungry at those times each day, which will then make the food more satisfying. If you're sometimes having breakfast, sometimes waiting till 11, sometimes doing a one meal a day, like it's all over the place. There's like a dietary chaos going on. Now I've heard people in the fitness world say that they do this deliberately to kind of keep their metabolism and their body guessing. Fine if that works for you, but if you struggle with regulating your food, chances are this isn't gonna work very well for you. Rhythm and structure and routine create safety, but that doesn't mean that we throw flexibility or spontaneity out the window but it means we have something to kind of come back to. We have kind of like this basis level of, okay, I have my breakfast, I have my lunch, and I have my dinner, and maybe I have snacks as well, depending on what suits you. You'll find most binge eating treatment programs will focus on this breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two or three snacks a day. And that's because we wanna get our biology in balance, and then we can see what's left emotionally. And the second H in health is for handling fluctuations. So people that don't struggle with food, they can handle it if they overeat one day or if they have a day where they feel a bit hungry at the end of the day. It doesn't swing them one way or another. Even recognizing that there are gonna be days when they're gonna be hungrier and they eat more and days when they're less hungry and they eat less. But what happens if you struggle with food is days that you're more hungry, you panic. And days when you're less hungry, you're like, yes, smashed it, I'm gonna try and make every day like this. And not recognizing that those fluctuations are gonna come. We have hormonal fluctuations in our body. We have different activity levels and just, our bodies are so complex with all these different processes going on. We don't necessarily know how much energy we need on a given day with our thinking mind. And there's a lot of catastrophization that happens. Sometimes I will have a day where I just feel bottomless. I just feel like I could eat and eat and eat. And these days just come along sometimes. And I don't judge myself and I don't get in a battle about it. I'm like, huh, okay, I'm extra hungry today. I seem to be eating more today. And when I relax into it, um, and this has taken a while to get to, like this is not an overnight thing. It's like, I can just trust the process because then I do have days where I am much less hungry and I can respond to that from a non-restrictive place as well. But this takes some time to get to. You need rhythm first. You need that reassurance because you might have a nervous system and a brain that becomes very reactive to any threat of not enough food. And whenever you are judging and fighting with your appetite and frustrated with yourself, like your brain, your primal brain learns not to trust you. It's like, if I let you make the food decisions, you're not gonna give us enough food. So I'm gonna really ramp this stuff up like hormonally, psychologically, emotionally, to get you to eat more. This is a biological and a psychological and an emotional and a social problem. And I know it can feel disheartening when I talk about it that way. It's like, oh, there's just so much to this problem. What am I supposed to do? But without looking at all the different facets, you'll just, you'll just keep feeling like you're going backwards and not making any progress in your recovery. And so the why, in healthy is that yesterday's eating does not dictate how you're allowed to eat today. And what I mean with that is there's a lot of bargaining that goes on if you struggle with food. You bargain with yourself. So it's like, okay, well today I can eat all these foods. I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna eat that, I'm gonna eat lots. 
and tomorrow I'm going to make up for it. And often it's tomorrow I'm going to do this. It's okay. It's a way of almost trying to calm yourself down because you're feeling panicked and stressed and distressed at how much you've eaten. So in order to feel safe and reassure yourself, it does make sense. You'll say to yourself tomorrow, I'm going to make up for this. And then of course the problem is, is that you're then getting in a fight with your appetite tomorrow and it goes on and on and on. If you use what you've had yesterday to try to figure out what you're allowed to eat today, you keep disrupting your biology, your appetite, the part of you that wants to eat regularly. Let today's eating be about today. <laughs> like, Because eating and hunger and the body, like it all exists now, in the moment now. What the body wants is now. But the mind goes backwards and forwards outside of now, trying to figure out what that needs to be instead of just coming into now. Okay, now it's lunchtime. So now I'm going to have some lunch. And I'm going to notice. I'm going to notice how hungry I am. See if I can notice anyway. See if I can notice when I feel full. But if you are trying to even get it right all the time, this is, the, this is where it all gets messed up for so many people, is just trying to get it right and the emotional distress, because the emotions then distort your thinking and dis distort your decision making, which is why my videos are always about trying to find mental and emotional peace, because I believe when people can find that state, they can then make decisions. Whereas so much of the time you're focused on what you think the decision should be, so you're focused on behavior. The thing that I say over and over again, I love saying it, I'm gonna say it again, people try to change the way they eat by trying to change the way they eat. That's the methodology and it doesn't work for most people. But if you can change how you are thinking and feeling and approaching food, that's when different behavioral choices start to feel possible. This is the way around, I think, for many people. Never gonna say for everybody. So there you go, there's your healthy relationship with food. Hunger and fullness, like that you can listen to and respond and acknowledge these things, that you can enjoy food, that you can enjoy an assortment of foods, that whether you like yourself or not isn't based on what you eat. Focusing on three meals a day or building up some kind of rhythm and routine around food. Handling fluctuations, seeing them as a very natural part of eating and being a human being on this planet and not using what you ate yesterday to try to determine what you should or shouldn't eat today. And if you found this video helpful, you might wanna check out this one here about making food decisions and thank you for watching and see you on the next video.